for the corresponding quadratic equation factor. If this doesn't happen, we will need to approximate the zeros of the quadratic equation if it has any. Then we'll use our accuracy agreement from section P5 and write the endpoints of any intervals to do two decimal places as illustrated in this next example. We're going to solve this graphically. Well, the first thing you need to do is you turn your calculator on. We're going to put in x squared minus 4x plus 1. You're going to graph it. We need to find our zeros. The way you do that, second trace. We're going to go left of where I think the zero is. We're going to go right of where I think the zero is. And again, make sure one's on the top of the x-axis and one's below it. So that means 0 0.27. 0 0.27 is going to be my zero. So this point here, my zeros, one will be 0 0.27. The other zero, will be at 3.73. Now it says greater than or equal to zero. Well, greater than zero is above the x-axis. And we're going to include these. So my answer, negative infinity to 0.27 in union with 3.73 to infinity. Moving on to B, we'll have 4x squared minus 12x plus, plus 7. We want to see where this is less than 0. Well, second trace. Let's find my zeros. So my first zero is at 0.79. My second zero will be at 2.21. So where is it less than zero? Well, here's the 0.79. To the right is the 2.21. It is less than zero below the x-axis. So my answer, 0.79 to 2.21. Now, we're moving on to example six. It says solve the inequality graphically. Well, if we put into our equation x squared plus 2x oops, plus 2, and the problem says we want to see where this is less than zero. Well, as you can see, there are no zeros here, and the graph does not go below the x axis. So because the graph does not go below the x-axis, there is no solution. Looking at B, we'll have this graph here. You can see that it doesn't go below the x axis, or it doesn't. Let's zoom in. You should be able to figure out that for and 4 
give you 8. So right there, you should be able to see that the 0 is 4, but doesn't go below 4. So this one, again, will have no solution. There is an x-intercept at x equals 4, but the graph doesn't go below the x-axis. To solve the inequality in example 7, we approximate the zeros of the corresponding graph. Then we determine the values of x for which a corresponding graph is above or on the x-axis. So if we look at example 7, solve the inequality graphically. What we're going to do, we're going to put this equation into our calculator. So x cubed plus 2x squared minus 1. Put that into your calculator. As you can see, it's kind of funny right near the origin there. So I'm going to zoom in one time. So what we need to do, we need to find these three zeros. So left of my first zero, right of my first zero. So my first zero is negative 1.62. Find my second zero, I'm going to do the same process. And negative one. My third zero. Will be at point six two. So I have the graph here already made. We know that this point here will be the 0.62. This point here will be the negative 1. And here is the negative 1.62. Where is this graph greater than or equal to 0? Well, it's above the x-axis and between negative 1.62 and negative 1. And after 0.62. So my answer will look like this. Try to rewrite that there because it's ugly. And there you have it. For part B, I'll just put it in my calculator as is. I'll have 8x minus 2x to the third, minus 1. You can find those zeros pretty easily. Second trace. My first zero is at negative 2.06. Second zero is at 0.13. And my third zero is at 0 there. Here's the, let's see, color. Here's the 0 0.13. 
is negative 2.06. So where is this less than zero? Well, it's less than zero here and there. So your answer will be negative 2.06 to 0.13 in union with 1.93 to infinity. Again, I use parentheses there because it is less than, not equal to. The movement of an object that is propelled vertically but then subject only to the force of gravity is an example of projectile motion. Now, when I talk about projectile motion, that's more like a cannonball or throwing a football or a baseball or any type of object you're going to throw that is suspect of projectile motion. Suppose an object is launched vertically from a point S sub zero feet above the ground with initial velocity of V naught feet per second. The vertical position S in feet of the object t seconds after it is launched is S equals negative 16 t squared plus V naught t plus S naught. Now when I say V naught, that just means the initial velocity, the starting velocity. So when I look here, a projectile is launched straight up from ground level with an initial velocity of 288 feet per second. When will the projectile's height be above the ground be 1152 feet? Now, a couple of things. This is being straight up from the ground, even though it looks like it is a parabola because it has that same shape. We're talking about height and time, height versus time, not exactly what the projectile looks like. So the first thing we have to do, we have to fill in the S value. Use this equation. S will equal negative 16 T squared plus the initial velocity of 288 T and it's launched launch from ground level so that's going to be plus zero. That's our equation. What we are going to do, we're going to change this S to 1152. So what we can do here, we can solve this equation using intersections. So we put y1 is negative 16x squared plus 288x, y2 is going to be 1152. Change our window a little bit, we'll go negative 2 to say 10. Why then we can go negative 10 to say 1500 feet. Why do we go 1500? Because we want it above 1152 feet. So when we graph this, oh, it looks like we're going to have to change our time, our x value here. Let's make this 20 seconds. And there we have it. Where is it going to hit 1152 feet? Well, let's find some intersections. So the second trace, number five. Our first intersection will be at six seconds. And if we do it again, you'll see here that our intersection will be 12 seconds. Now the next question for part B, when will the projectile's height above ground be at least 1152 feet? Well, if it says at least, that means it's got to be greater than or equal to 1152 feet. That's the lowest it's going to be. That will be in between 6 seconds and 12 seconds. That will be this area of the graph right there. Now again, if you should have any questions, you need to let me know before school, after school, or during lunch, or maybe even during a study hall.